Hello and welcome to Musicality Now. Today we have a very special episode. My name is Christopher Sutton. I'm the founder and director of Musical U. And although we normally do interviews on this show, today I'm joined by a special guest who has previously done an interview with us and is back to share something very interesting and relevant to you in your musical life. I'm joined by Glory St. Germain of Ultimate Music Theory. Glory, say a quick hello. Hey, Christopher. Uh, great to be back on uh, the Musical uh, U show. Thank you so much for having me. So when we spoke before, we talked about a number of things, and I, if you haven't seen that previous interview with Glory, definitely go back and check it out for all about her own background in music and her perspective on music theory, which is definitely one I respect and admire and recommend for anyone who wants to brush up on their theory knowledge. And one thing we talked about a little bit in that interview was learning styles and the importance of being conscious of how you best learn. And one of the things that we kind of touched on there but didn't go deep on was linguistics and the power of words in our learning. Glory has recently been working on a fantastic new masterclass all about this, about transformational vocabulary and its impact on your music learning. And so I invited her back on the show to share a little bit that, of that with us today. And maybe we can just start off, Glory, with the, the basic question of what, what is this transformational vocabulary idea and why should people be interested? Yes, well, I think I'll start by saying I am overflowing with joy and anticipation of our interview today. And sometimes when we even greet people, we are already impacting um, our vocabulary. So I have a question for you, Christopher. So that's how are you feeling today? I am feeling over-caffeinated, <laughs> is probably the, the, the one word answer. <laughs> Doing interviews in the evening is always a bit of a trip, so over-caffeinated. That's a great answer, that's a great answer. It makes me excited and excitable. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is, um, you know, as, as friends and, um, and, and people that we meet, even family, sometimes we say we're tired or we're excited or we're overwhelmed or we're in total bliss or we're just fine. And so sometimes when we think about the vocabulary, we listen to what other people are saying, but sometimes we need to also listen to our own vocabulary because it puts us in that state, right? So sometimes one word that resonates with you can have sort of a chain reaction uh, to create those emotions and, and gives us those results, you know, even before, like you said, you're caffeinated. So you're already, you know, feeling the buzz and I've got my coffee going on here too. So I think one of the things that we share, Christopher, is that we need to be aware of the words that we choose, uh, through transformational vocabulary. That's really interesting. I've come across a few people in the last couple of years who make a point of answering how are you doing or how's it going or how are you with something really effusive like not just yeah it's fine or not too bad like once you become conscious of this you really notice and some people you ask them how it's going they will always say not too bad and when you think about it it's like is that your perspective on life like things are going they're not terrible versus someone who chooses to always answer that question or at least as long as things are going reasonably well to answer it with something like absolutely fantastic or yeah. couldn't be better yeah i think it really does have an impact subconsciously absolutely it totally does as a matter of fact um, uh, I had a young uh, person working for me as a VA and after a couple of days I said okay I, I need you to change your vocabulary because every time I'd say how are you doing she'd say oh okay and it drove me crazy because if you ask me how I'm doing and you know me well Christopher I will always say fantastic you know thanks for asking because it puts me in that mindset of saying, well, if I say fantastic, then you're going to go, oh, well, this is, I'm happy to talk to you. And even if I'm maybe not, I mean, everybody can't have a perfect, fantastic day all the time, but it certainly does shift your thoughts, right? I think so. And it reminds me of something that came up in a recent conversation with Mark Morley Fletcher, who is an expert in performance psychology and peak performance. And he was saying, you know, it, the physicality of what you do and the way you talk about it and the way you think about it, the words that are going on in your mind, they genuinely affect the emotions that happen. Yes. And it's that it's that thing of smiling to make yourself happy and saying I'm fantastic because 
silly as it sounds, you'll feel a little bit better after you say that compared with if you say, oh, it's, it's going okay. And then you feel a little bit worse than before. Yeah, something right. else. I'm a little stressed. Yeah. Well, I think most beliefs um, are honestly are formed by words, right? So transformational vocabulary is when we choose our words to alter our state. And that can happen whether you communicate with other people or whether you're talking to yourself, as, as you would say. And our listeners may be wondering already, what does this all have to do with musicality and musical training? You know, it's all very well to, to cheer ourselves up and be um, thinking about positive psychology or self-management, self-regulation emotionally. But yeah. if they've come here to learn about music, what, what's the relevance? I think the relevance is that sometimes when we talk about musicality and we use words such as, oh, I don't think I can do that, or this is really hard, or I, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I can't understand the chord structure, or we, we have these negative thoughts, and we're already saying, I can't do it, you know, I've seen a million people who, you know, you hand them an iPhone, and if they're not used to texting, they go, oh, I don't know how to work this thing, and they just, and they don't even try, and so that really is a mindset that I can't do it, and if you're open to learning and you use those transformational vocabularies in your learning, you're going to learn faster and more enjoyably. And there's one thing, not only that we need to learn music the easy way, but we also need to develop our self-confidence and implementation uh, skills and, and it's lifelong learning. And one of the things that you just said, um, Christopher, you talked about performers, you need to have the mindset and powerful transformational uh, vocabulary, that's a long word, it has a huge impact on our learning, on our performance, and ultimately on our attitude, right, to life in general, I think. And so let's unpack that a little bit and, and maybe give people some more specifics, because I think, I think the concept is clear and the motivation is clear. But what are we talking about, really? Presumably, we don't need to think before every single word we speak and carefully switch out one word for another. How do we make this practical? How does it work? Um, I think sometimes what you need to do is you need to switch things. There's, there's a big thing, and it's the, the words you habitually choose affect how you communicate with yourself, and the result is with what you're going to experience. So I want you to think about words that you often use to describe a situation. You know, I don't have time, I don't know how to play this, and we can change that vocabulary. And here's a little example. I think I left myself a couple of notes here. Um, so if we think about, I want to rise up. I want to. I want to be a little taller. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come to that. Um, that challenge. Then by using that, we are already opening up ourselves to learning. Now, when people are studying your courses, Christopher, they have to come with a mindset that I'm ready to learn and I'm excited to learn. And the words that we choose, number one, we read them. But here's an interesting thing that I learned as I was studying this. And that is that the words, you know, someone said to me, Glory, what words are not in your vocabulary? Um, words that are not in my vocabulary are depression, are um, suicidal thoughts, are um, um, anger. Those are words that I don't use about myself, right? And so when you use words like that, it affects your thought process and it affects your actions. So you really, and you can alter your words, you can alter your state, and it can be simple. Instead of saying, I am so angry right now, you can say, you know, this is a little bit challenging. So it always can change how you're approaching a thought. Interesting, yeah, and I think it's a virtuous cycle, right, in that if you become aware of the less helpful vocab and you switch it out for something positive, you gradually become the person who wouldn't even think of that negative vocab and you come to embody those positive terms instead and it just kind of um, it, it develops your character and your personality I think and your attitude in a very natural way just becoming conscious of those habitual words. I think I you think... nailed it when you said to become conscious of that because you know if you look at words to describe yourself and say if you complete a goal and you say to yourself huh well that was well done well now in your mind you know, it was well done. But what if you use the words, well, that was impeccable. That was awesome. That was excellent. That was outstanding. You create more intensity than just trying to make things okay or, or make them a little bit better. 
Yeah, I love that. And to be clear, I don't think we're talking about like Pollyannaism and just whitewashing everything and denying there's ever anything negative or any problems. Like it's not about de denial or deluding yourself. It's, yes. I think it's just it's more about the spin you put on things, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, as an educator, um, uh, you know, I teach a lot of children. I have five kids of my own with my husband. And um, I think it's it's also about communicating with other people because sometimes, you know, even when you and I just jumped on the call today, I said, you know, hi, how are you doing? It's the it's the the words that I'm choosing to, you know, and also tonality there, of course, to uh, just open up a conversation with positivity. And of course, it doesn't it doesn't mean like you said, you're not going to whitewash everything, but it is very, very, very important. And I've seen it firsthand in my own communication. If you think someone is annoyed with you, well, the words that you choose can change that, can't they? You can either get into a really big fight because of the words you choose, or you can alter that by, you know, I mean, of course you can say sorry, but it can also, you know, be the way that you say it, right? 100%, yeah. And I'll, I'll confess to have been very, to have been very naive about this, for a long time, I think in running Easy Ear Training starting 10 years ago, probably for the first five years or so, I just thought, you know, education, as long as the material is good, the student will learn. You know, as long as the app is well designed, the student will get results. And it really honestly wasn't until we shifted to Musical U five years ago, started the online site, and we were there, not just, you know, doing support via email, but in there every day with our members, helping them learn, seeing how they responded. I think it wasn't until that point that I really began to value this and appreciate the significance of attitude and mindset and the responsibility we have as educators to nurture the right kind of mindset and show our students how important this stuff is because I know that a lot of them will otherwise be taking the attitude I always did as a music learner which was just like do the practice, develop the skills, get the instrument and you know if you have the wrong attitude or you have the wrong mindset, you could have the best tools in the world, the best information in the world, and you're not going to make the progress you could if you paid a bit of attention to that side of things. And I, so I think it's it's something that should be talked about more. And if we can do anything to help people become more conscious of the power of it, that's a really good thing. It's something, yeah, I think also I've been late to the game in terms of how I work with my team. You know, you have a team yourself, Glory, you know, as a leader, the way you talk about things really matters. And I've become very careful about gently reminding my team to talk about things in a certain way. You know, we call it this, we don't call it that. We discuss things in terms of this, not that, because it really, it creates that culture, it creates that attitude, and it has a very clear impact on the results you get. Absolutely. And I think too, even when you're, when you're, you know, you talk about dealing with your, 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 your customers or your family or your friends or even whatever you're doing sometimes if you're getting an email um, and they say i am furious or livid or i'm enraged or i'm angry or i'm upset um, you know I, I actually want to share with you a statement that i learned from tony robbins and he said the essence of transformational vocabulary the words that we attach to our experience become our experience and I love that quote, the words that we attach to our experience become our experience. So if you're already saying that you're annoyed or you're angry or you're frustrated, well, then that becomes your experience. And I think that, you know, there is no such thing as failure. There's only feedback and lessons learned. That's just my personal philosophy. And when I go on, and I've had websites too that I've gone on and I've found it challenging to navigate. And have I been frustrated? Yes. So what are your options here? Well, your options are to contact support and say, hey, I need a little bit of help and, you know, and get that help, get that feedback communicate with, um, you know, the course providers when you're studying and saying, I need extra help with this because really you and I, Christopher, are here to serve our musicians, right? We want to make sure that we're helping them. And when we change the words of frustration and anger to being disenchanted or having a little bit of a setback or being a smidge cranky, when I actually thought about that, I kind of laughed out loud because... <laughs> If you're really annoyed with something, to go from that to just a smidge cranky, it's kind of hard to, you know, not laugh, right? Because it alters your state if you say, well, I'm a smidge cranky, you know. Definitely. And I know we've talked a little bit about 
words and you know specific examples of nouns or adjectives or verbs you might switch out but i know that one other area you talk about a little bit is metaphor could you explain the relevance of that and and how that can be helpful yeah absolutely i think in order to just have like phenomenal growth and laser like focus you need to make sure that you're that you're using your words that you've got you know one word actually can make a profound effect on your thinking and your attitude and your words also influence others, right? And metaphors. So uh, when we're really thinking about sharing something like that, um, you know, my mom was always talking about how awesome it would be. And as soon as she used those kind of words, it changed things. So for example, if I'm gonna talk about a metaphor, um, let me use, for example, uh, if you wanna be a bit of a detective and you're going to simply word, use words such as, let's talk musical terms, for example. So now I'm going to be a detective and I'm gonna be analyzing a piece of music. So now I'm gonna be a detective and simply by changing words, and I'll use the Italian terms, when you change the words, uh, let's say tempo, you go from adagio to allegro. In dynamics, you go from forte to piano. And um, articulation, you wanna go from legato to staccato. You can even talk about going from tonality from major to minor. When we talk about words, you can imagine, because we're all musicians here, everything changes and so we can alter our state as we can alter music you're not going to play funeral music at a wedding and you're not going to play wedding music at a funeral these are things that alter our state and that's why it's so important to listen to the words that we use because we are musicians and that expression is going to come through in our music does that make sense Definitely does, yeah. And I love that metaphor of a detective. I, it reminds me one of the, the favorite word substitutions I've come across is the idea of just reminding yourself to take a curious attitude. You know, we had the, one of the curious piano teachers on the show a while back. Yes. And I love that brand name because what better encapsulation of the right attitude to learning? You know, it's not hard. It's interesting. You know, <laughs> it's not it's not strange it's curious like yes. that that it just immediately shifts how you see challenges how you see points of confusion how you see opportunities i think yes well I, a metaphor is actually symbolic it's, it's explaining a concept that has a familiar association and so oftentimes even when i'm speaking i might say well do you want to play that fast or slow or do you want it so now i'm almost pre-teaching the term of, of tempo, right? So when we can use something such as being a detective, you know, pretty much everybody knows what a detective is, then you can, analysis, the word analysis doesn't seem as challenging of, all right, now we're gonna analyze this piece of music, how boring is that? But if you wanna be a detective, so now let's go through it and see what the chord structure is. Or So I think whenever we explain or communicate a concept, and associate it to something else, that's when we're using a metaphor and it, and it allows us to gain, I think, deeper understanding and simpler, right? It just makes it familiar for us. And you made reference there to Tony Robbins talking about this topic. So presumably, you know, transformational vocabulary is not something that Glory St. Germain invented last week. This is something that's out there, a broader concept which you're applying to music learning. Absolutely. I think it's essential. Uh, you know, I'm an avid student uh, of, of everything mindset. Uh, you know, I have a massive library that I love. I'm, I'm you know, I really enjoy reading and, and Tony Robbins is, you know, one of the greats, of course. But when I learn something, I think the key is to implement it and share it. And when something has a profound effect on me, and I realize in my own business, you know, as a business owner, um, we often, and especially when you're the CEO, you're at the top. And yes, of course, I have a web developer. I've got, you know, um, uh, you know, an editor. I've got lots of people that are on my team. But the buck stops here. And my mindset, if I don't have that positive mindset, then I can't lead. And that's the key. And it doesn't matter if you are in a band and you're a part of a group, somehow you are still leading, you are an influencer there. When you're playing the piano and you've got somebody else on guitar, you know, you're part of a team and the words that you use are gonna help that team be successful. So you've got to lead and you've got to know that your words matter. You can't just go, well, that was a great rehearsal, guys. What does that mean, great rehearsal? It doesn't mean anything, right? You need to use words that will really um, uplift you and, and 
And like I said, be laser focused on your goals so that when you get there, uh, you know, you feel proud of yourself and, and you're excited to take the next step and the next challenge. But I really, to our listeners today, Christopher, I really challenge you to be aware of the words that you use, not only when speaking to other people, but the thoughts inside your head. They, they're a game changer for me. They really are. Fantastic. And in a moment, we'll point people to where they can get access to the free masterclass you've been running, where you go into this in much more detail. But before we do that, we've kind of sprinkled lots of good examples, I think, of how this applies to music learning. But you just said, you know, become aware of your inner voice as well as what you say out loud. Are there any particular things you'd recommend people look out for or any like favorite substitutions you'd recommend they make if they were going to take away something from this conversation to go and apply? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think there's a few of them. Uh, sometimes when, um, for example, you're, when you change your words, you change your outcome. So if you say, you know, I'm confused, maybe you can transform that into I'm curious. I'm depressed, transform that into, you know what, I'm on the road to turn it around. I'm impatient. You can transform that into I'm anticipating, right? Or if you say I'm exhausted, why not use I'm recharging? You know, failure transforms into learning. I think that's a big one. And really, you make a difference. And I want to share a, a couple of sentences, and, and if I can, Christopher, because I think it's, it's something that even as I was writing this down, I had a hard time saying it out loud myself. And I always think if I'm going to share something with you, I better be doing it myself, right? Like you can't teach if you don't implement. So I will give you my words if that's okay. <laughs> so deep breath and a big smile. Okay, are you ready, Christopher? Say yes. I'm ready. Okay, here it is. So, and I will say it, and in your mind, you should be repeating this out loud. So my bewitching smile is captivating. I am enchanting and mesmerizing. Those are great words, right? My enthusiastic presentation is fascinating. I am extremely interesting. My powerful learning is outstanding. I am exceptionally fantastic. And my transformational vocabulary impacts my learning. And as I was saying those, you know, writing things down is different than saying them out loud. It's huge. It's absolutely huge huge. Um, when I took a, a, a course that I was taking some time ago, it said, write down your thoughts about um, something that you haven't been a success at. And so I had to write things down, like saying, oh, you know, um, you're always overdrawn. You always spend more money than you make. And, and it was sort of down that line. And then the powerful transformation for me was this. The, um, uh, the uh, presenter said, now, imagine your child or spouse sitting beside you and say those words as if you're speaking to them. So, for example, you are always broke. You always spend more money than you have in your bank account. You never learn things properly. You don't do this. Well, you know what? It brought me to tears because I thought I would never speak to my children like that. And yet you speak like that to yourself. Wow. Boom. I had this awakening and I went, oh my goodness, I have to have a conversation with myself. So, you know, today I just want to self say, if you're still on listening with us, give yourselves a round of applause because you make a difference in the words that you choose for yourself. So be happy, be inspired. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that. It's such a powerful point, you know, to, to be a good friend to yourself is not something that comes natural, I think, to most of us. And it's so powerful when you take that moment to be like, w would I speak to anyone else this way? Well, no, then why am I doing it inside my head? I think it definitely can be really yes. impactful. And I, I love the, the sentences you shared there. I feel I, I have to hold back from opening a whole other can of worms, which is you may have come across um, the recent book published last year, The Alter Ego Effect, where it's all about this idea from sports psychology of crafting a whole persona that you can just shift into and become that person and how genuinely powerful it is for changing your outcomes. And I felt like the description you were sharing there, it, it was so evocative for how that could work. You know, if you were about to step on stage with your band and you normally think in terms of, I'm nervous, I get stage fright, I'm not sure I can do this. And you switched into a set of sentences right. that laid out exactly the kind of performer you wanted to be. Yes. 
saying those to yourself yeah. right before you go on stage would totally change your state, totally change the outcome you get. And I, I hope that underscores for everyone the importance of this and the power for any music learner. Yes. And, and speaking of music, you know, even when I'm, well, my husband can attest to this. I did uh, seven live um, workshop presentations in seven different cities in a matter of three and a half days. So my husband, we literally drove and then I had to present and then get in the car. We drove for two more hours. There was another location. Then we checked into the hotel and this happened for three and a half days and, uh, you know, seven workshops live that each of them was two hours. It was intense. And my husband will tell you that before, while we're sitting in the car, before I'm going in, I have a, a, just a routine and, and I listen to certain songs that are my motivation that put me in state. And without those words, I don't have my energy, you know, because you got to go in there and you have to have energy. And whether you're an educator or whether you're just going to have a team meeting or you're going to a band rehearsal, show up, but show up fully present be present. Don't be thinking about, you know, grocery shopping or you didn't clean out the garage or anything. Just be present and bring your whole self. And then when you're, when you're, you know, going on to your next activity, do that. But I think that's something that, you know, when I come into, uh, you know, musical you and I want to listen to a podcast, be present. Yeah. You can be on the treadmill or you can be doing whatever you want to be doing, but be present. Listen to these incredible interviews because you're going to learn something. So I think when you're focused and open to learning, then be present, right? And use, and use, those, use those words in your head to say, I'm going to implement what I'm learning today. That's the big takeaway. Absolutely. Well, Glory, I could happily talk to you all day long and I, I have to be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. I really wanted to bring you in to talk about some of this because it is so powerful. And we'll end by pointing people to the full masterclass. I'm sure some are hungry for more and want some more detail of how this works and what it could do for them. So the web address, I believe, is musictheoryclass.com. Is that right? Yes, they're going to learn about the three essential elements of musicianship skills in our free complete music theory masterclass. So it simply goes to musictheoryclass.com and I'm excited to see you there. Thank you so much, Christopher. Thank you, Glory. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to like it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, please also subscribe to our channel there. That's going to help make sure you get all our latest videos as soon as they come out. And it also helps us reach more people, which means more episodes, better guests, and everybody wins. So please take a second to like this video and hit subscribe.